Welcome everyone. This is video number three in a series based on my book Learn Harmony V3 for PIC 32MZ. Video number one showed how to set up a development environment for programming PIC 32MZ devices. Video number two showed how to configure the Curiosity 2.0 PIC MZEF development board, configure the basic Harmony software components, then compile, load, and execute the application. At the end of video number two, we had a complete working project without any custom code. The application was all created by Harmony. So if you now want to add your own custom code, you'll need to understand how Harmony is structured and how it works. In this learning video, I will explain the Harmony super loop where to add custom code within the Harmony framework, and how to use multiple state machines to create your own robust application. By the way, if you like this video and want to see more, hit the subscribe button on the screen. Okay, so let's learn something. So, in that case, let's see, we're going to open up MPLAB X. Uh, so, this is what we're going to learn. Uh, okay, we'll open up MPLAB X and open the project we built in the last video. There's this kind of a shortcut down here. It also, you can do it up here, open recent project. But I'm going to use the open project example here so that you realize where where these uh, projects are located and how to get to them. So under Harmony V3 apps, MZEF base, and the, the firmware subdirectory is added by Harmony. has to be there. Don't mess with it. And then under that is the MZEF base dot X. This is the dot X file is the one you open um, when you're um, opening a new project. So let's open that. Okay. And that's where we left it off at the end of um, video two. So what we want to do here is start looking at the source files. Remember Harmony um, created all these files, put them in this these places. And the first thing when the program starts executing, it calls main.c. So let's open that. Okay, there's main.c. And within that is the famous super loop right here. So when you enter the program in main, it goes to the initialization section, sysinitialize. It says initializes all the modules, including the new ones you will add. And then here's the infinite loop while true. And then it calls the routine system tasks, sys tasks. And that's where all the state machines and your own things occur. So that's how simple this is. However, exactly where where do you put your stuff and where is it so it doesn't interfere with the Harmony stuff? So the first thing to look at is sysinitialize. So let's go find that. That's under config pick 32 mz initialization. So let's open that one. Eventually here. There it is. And so this is a lot of the stuff that Harmony creates. There is all, I think we covered this a little bit before. A lot of the um, parameters that we configured in video two. It declares system objects. And there, there is the routine that um, main C calls. Uh, remember, sysinitialize, sysinitialize. So there's where it it's going to use its 
clock, some um, other internal bits, GPIO initialize, and then here's app initialize. That's where custom code goes. And then this is after that's all done, then, init then it initializes the um, interrupt controller. So app initialize is where where you would insert your um, custom code. So then once you're through get through the initialization, now you enter the infinite loop. So we'll go to sys tasks, which is over here in tasks.c. Get that one up. There it is. And tasks.c, and there's sys-tasks. So sys-tasks has slots in here. There's nothing in it yet. But when we add more software comp Harmony software components, Harmony will put their, their calls in here for each of the uh, tasks that, that are being um, used. But here at the bottom is app tasks. That's where the application tasks go. So the, the main loop calls app tasks. Back up here from sys tasks is called from the super loop. And it, the last thing it does is called your own application tasks. So that's uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Um, so now let me explain a little bit that well the super loop uh, relies on super fast execution of the infinite loop infinite loop here what it's calling sys tasks if that's executed fast enough um, this gives the appearance of real time um, and it will will be called if you do timing on this thousands of times thousands of times maybe per millisecond so you will get quote, real-time performance. But what, what you really need to watch out for, though, is uh, some sort of blocking call that would create a, a, a pause in this, in this super loop and mess up any, quote, real-time uh, timing that you have. So uh, that's, that's the caution on blocking calls. Blocking would be like uh, if you wrote to a uh, hard drive and waited for the write to complete before it continued. That may take 40, 50 milliseconds. And when you're running the super loop at thousands of times per millisecond, you can see what, what that would do to any internal uh, timing that you might have. So watch out for blocking calls. Okay, so most of the microchip examples use state machines, and typically they'll use one state machine that's included in app.c. Um, there, let's bring that one up. Um, so there's app tasks, and there's a couple of state machines. It uses app state init, app state service tasks. That's about it. This is, but if you get some of the more uh, complex examples, um, they'll have many more states, but they put them into app tasks. Okay, and that's fine for a single state machine. But if you're going to add um, other functions, uh, and try to squeeze your own state machine into that, you know, it's, it, you'll uh, end up with software suicide. The thing will just get all, all messed up. So you have to maintain separate state machines. But how? So I will show you how to add your uh, own custom state machines or objects as they're called in Harmony. So the first thing you have to do is create a, add a header file up here with the name. So let's, let's name our state machine clocks. So you'd have a clocks.h routine here. And in the source files down here, 
you'd add a, a, a clocks.c file. Okay, so that's that's straightforward. You you're under complete control of how, what goes into those files. Um, but now, how does that get um, picked up by Harmony? So what you'll need to do is modify some of the Harmony routines a little bit. Let's go up here. So in app.h, which is up here, I, this is just a snippet from um, app.h with a, with a state machine. So you'll have to include that header file, which I called clocks.h here, to the list of um, head, uh, header files. You'll need to define global data for your application that goes, um, and this again, whether it's global data, if it's data that's just in your, inside of your state machine, you don't need to define it here, but in our case, we're going to be accessing that data outside the state machine. And so I believe the, the examples use app underscore data, um, I took out the underscore just to avoid uh, any question of whether, whether I was overlaying something and using it wrong. So the name is, is close but not exact. So if there's any app underscore data in there, it needs to be deleted. And then you'll have the, the prototype for app initialize and app tasks. So that's all you need to do in the, the app.h thing so it recognizes your new uh, state machine. And in app.c, you'll have to include um, app.h and the definition for your data. That, that's, that should be easy enough to understand. Then here is the app initialize uh, for um, this particular application. Here's global data needs to be initialized and then you initialize the state machines down here so in this case I called it clocks clocks initialize if you had other state machines you just stack them up here uh, stack up their initialization calls so that's only called once then app tasks uh, will call instead of like we had here it just starts executing. In this case, for multiple machines, you call the call each one of them in order. So I call them clocks SM state machine. And if you had more, it would be calls of the other state machines. It's fairly straightforward and simple, but if you get them in the wrong place, you'll you'll run into problems. So I think that just about does this uh, this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to create and execute a base Harmony project that will be used in the rest of the examples. Also, this will also include the source code and explanation how, how that clocks state machine works. So, remember to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in video number four.